And finally, we're on to the last country, Iraq. Let's learn a little bit about what you can expect to see in Iraq. The geography of Iraq is pretty typical to what we would assume. It has broad sandy plains and the Syrian desert is found in the west. There are also low marshy flooded areas in the Persian Gulf in the southeast of Iraq. You can also find the Zagros Mountains in the north, as you can see pictured here. Iraq also borders Iran, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan. Here are the two rivers that drain the land of Iraq to. As you can see, they run right through the middle of Iraq. This is pictured in the map to the left. Here are a couple different sceneries you can see in Iraq. You have the city area, which is where most tourists go. But then you also have the Syrian desert pictured on the bottom right. The flag looks similar to one that we've seen earlier, but it is still unique in its own way. This was adopted as the official flag on July 31st, 1963. It was slightly modified on January 13th, 1991 to what you see here. This flag originally had also had three green stars on it, but they were removed as symbolism became more prominent to the country flag. Their Independence Day was declared on October 3rd, 1932. The colors you see here, the red, the white, and the black, are Panarabic colors that represent Arab unity and independence. The green lettering in the middle on the white stripe reads, God is the greatest. Population in Iraq is actually pretty significant compared to some of the other countries we have reviewed. Iraq has almost 40 million people as of last month. For a more updated version of what the population is today, you can visit the given website. Even though there are almost 40 million people in Iraq, this only equals out to be about 0.5% of the total world population, which then equals out to be about 231 people per square mile. One of the most surprising things that people find with the population in Iraq is compared to the other countries where people would live between the ages of 70 and mid 80s, people in Iraq live to be approximately 20 years old. Many people may question this, but a lot of it has to do with young kids going into war and the con living conditions in Iraq are not technically up to scale to that of what we see in the other countries and even here in the U.S. The economy of Iran or of Iraq is dominated by the oil sector providing almost 95 percent of the foreign exchange earnings. This leads the oil being the number one export of Iraq. Their GDP is almost $545 billion, but over half of this at a 66% is public debt. Their inflation is a little high and their, employ their unemployment is very high. And as you can see, their economic freedom is pretty much non-existent. Right now it has not been recorded for this year, but in past years it was actually in the orange area and below world average. The government in Iraq is a federal parliamentary republic. The current president is Bouad Mozam, who is pictured here. And if you get a moment, please watch this video in which describes a few different things about globalization in Iraq and their future.
just like other countries, um, Iraq has a couple different prominent religions, the f number one being Muslim. However, even though it is a small percentage, there is also Christianity and a couple other religions found throughout Iraq. And according to the Central Intelligence Agency, there has been voluntary relocation of many Christian families to northern Iraq. Racing reporting indicates that the overall Christian population may have dropped by as much as 50% since the fall of the Saddam Hussein regime in 2003, with many fleeing to Syria, Jordan, and Lebanon. And in the background here is one of the most prominent churches in which are attended in Iraq, the St. Joseph Cathedral. Dining etiquette is also one of its own unique aspects also. It is advised that you do not discuss business at, during dinner. Much like you hear many American families say, business and family are always kept separate. Table manners, like we're used to, are relatively formal, no elbows on the table, napkin on the lap, things as such. As far as how to eat, they recommend that you use your right hand for eating and drinking. And because some meals in Iraq are usually a, like on a floor, it's important that one, you check to see if you need to remove your shoes, and two, if the meal is on the floor, see if you should sit cross-legged or kneel on one knee. Never, though, should one let their feet touch the food mat. Many times when people come together for a dinner in an in, in Iraq cultural setting, it is advised that they have more conservative and smart, smartly organized clothing to wear to it. It is also considered polite to leave some food on your plate while you have finished eating. Some food customs you can find in Iraq are traditionally one may sacrifice a lamb or a goat. Um, this used to be celebrated at family gatherings. Celebrations, though, are now served with a meat to symbolize the past tradition of the sacrifice of a lamb or a goat. And then this is an event immediately after Ramadan filled with lots of food, especially meats. Which Ramadan is a Iraqi holiday or feast that is usually celebrated. Eid al -Adha is an event only celebrated after a pilgrim returns from Hajjah, which is then a journey for every able Muslim to go to Mecca again. It is also recognized as a festival with a large focus on feasting, similar to what we've seen with Israel. Some common foods you can find in Iraq consist of the national dish, Maska, which is a grilled carp prepared with the fish cut into two halves, basically belly up, oh, with a belly up opening. Uh, a lot of times it'll be seasoned and be served with lemons and such, sometimes even with a side of like hash beans or some kind of formal soup of the country. Lamb is also a favorite meat of choice. Hence, how we mentioned earlier, how they used to sacrifice a lamb or a goat. Most dishes are also served with rice. Rice is kind of their pasta that they incorporate with every meal. Plus, it's kind of a bland dish, so they can add and spice it up any way they would like. Rural areas among Iraq are customary to eating together out of the same bowl because food is tightly rationed. This brings us back to what we used to see in our Great Depression, how they used to ration um, portions. But instead of rationing portions to each individual person here, if food is low uh, and supply is low, then they just all eat out of the same bowl and try to evenly 
eat the same amount. A popular dessert found in Iraq are these cardamom cookies. They are kind of like a rice cookie with an almond on top.